Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo white forest stain. We're going to turn the white forest into a brown forest off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even further along into the 1500 ladder. We're only like 40 subs away now, 50 subs, something like that. I really do appreciate all the support. I never thought I would be talking about getting to 1500 subscribers. So I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I actually had to go back through and look through my most recent videos to see if I'd already done a Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth about this, and I haven't. I covered the Exodia cards, um, but I never covered White Forest, which I could have sworn that I did, but apparently your boy didn't. So we slacking. We out here, though, with much less proxies than we've had before, because if you haven't seen uh, my live stream that I did the other day, um, and it's obviously it's pre-recorded now, it's up on the channel, though, you can go watch it. We opened up a case of the Infinite Forbidden, and this case was blessed by the Yu-Gi-Oh! Gods. I'm talking we pulled three copies of Mulcharmy, we pulled three copies of a Stellar, one copy of Rosette, we pulled four Fiendsmith Engravers, one of which was a QCR. I nearly fell out of my chair and took a dump all over my brand new tile floor here, although I say new, it's been here for a couple years. Regardless, you want to go see me flip out like a little school child, go check that out. It was a great time opening up that case. It's always fun opening up product. Preferably when the set's actually good. Um, I wanted to do a Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth um, on White Forest, aka White Woods in the OCG. I've seen a lot of different takes on the deck, and I gotta give a shout out to Bryn YGO. Hopefully I didn't just completely butcher your username. Really in-depth player. If you want to learn even more about White Forest besides this video, you gotta go check that guy out. He's got like just over 600 subs, and I know how it feels to be on the grind. Go check him out. Go subscribe. Let him know that Avery sent you. Uh, I actually just commented on one of his videos today where he was talking about using Millennium cards, which seems pretty good. I thought about doing that, but I was too lazy to try it out. So I thanked him for his service and uh, testing that out. Now, as always with these Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth uh, episodes, I guess, if you want to call them that, um, I used to not do deck profiles because it was so experimental. But I think especially with a deck like White Forest, it's good to do a deck profile before going through the combos and how the deck functions and things like that. Um, just again, like I said in the, um, Ex Millennium Exodia, uh, video, keep in mind that these builds are experimental. Something could change. I may even change this build by this time tomorrow. Who knows? Um, but I also want to go over some ideas that I've been messing around with because I feel that overall white forest runic is the best version of white forest. Um, it's it's got issues though so we'll, we'll we'll go through that so the three copies of a stellar this is your if i could line it up here heart and soul of the deck um i wouldn't even say it's a stratus it's just essentially your combo starter you dump a spell or trap from hand or field to grave to summon um another white force from deck if this is engraved and you send a spell or trap for cost you can summon this back out uh, so three copies of that, and then I only pulled one out of my case, so I said much less proxies, didn't say we have no proxies. Three copies of Rosette, this is basically just an extender. If you special summon during the opponent's turn, you can add it back to your hand, it's it's kind of adorable. Um, and then next up, I don't know about these ratios, but we're playing two of the Roselia, uh, and then two of whatever this guy is, he's a level four searcher. Um, some people play one in one, I've tried that, but then anytime I need to search, uh, sometimes I just don't have any targets in deck. Um, so I don't know if I'm really sold on this. They could be other cards. You could cut one of each for some other cards that I'm thinking about playing in White Forest Runic. So do keep that in mind. Um, that's it for the monsters because now we're just playing Runic spells. So three Flashing Fire, uh, three Freezing Curse, three Slumber, if I can get all of this together. Ugh. Three Slumber, or uh, yeah, and then three Freezing Curse. Three tip, just the tip, because, you know, that's how we roll. Uh, three copies of Destruction, one of the Smiting Storm, one Droplets, and one Dispelling. I'm actually considering cutting um, Droplets and Dispelling, because Dispelling never comes up. It's a way to get a free body, which is cute. And then Droplets, I never really want to use when I'm going first, because I don't want my opponent to possibly draw Hand Traps. Um, or even into Nibiru, because that's one of the biggest choke points with this deck, is that it can get Nibiru sky high more than pretty much any other deck in the game right now. Uh, and then just the two copies of Fountain. Um, that's pretty standard. And then for some flex spots here. So we are on three talents. Um, Droll really destroys this deck. Nibiru really destroys this deck. You have ways to kind of somewhat insulate yourself from Nib in the sense of by your fifth summon, you are using your 
um, Synchro Monsters effect to, you're using the Roselia Synchro to pitch a spell or trap from hand or field to add the Woes of the White Woods from deck to hand if it's still in your deck, if you didn't open it or draw it, whatever. Then if they nib you, you at least have the trap, which the trap can let you Book of Eclipse during the opponent's turn. You can just Book of Eclipse their field with the um, level 6 Synchro. Um, but I don't know if this is really it, because, of course, you can also die really hard to Droll. And if you get hit with Droll, then you can at least go Talents, rip a card out of their hand, but then your turn pretty much ends, and then they're probably just going to OTK you. Um, something else I've been messing around with is more stun cards, actually. Um, being able to play something like Messenger of Peace over Talents, um, the stun cards kind of act like an oh shit button, where if they draw you, they nib you, whatever, oh crap, well, uh, I'm at least going to end on setting a skill drain because I drew into it or whatever, and then activate a Messenger of Peace, and now you're just not playing the game. Uh, the reason why this is good is because you can choose whether or not you want to pay 100 life points during each of your standby phases for the Messenger, or you can leave it on the field so that when the turn, when the game gets back to you, you can use, like, say, a Stellar or Rosette to send the Messenger piece or the Skill Drain, depending on the game state, as a cost. That's what's really cool about these White Force monsters, that they send spells and traps for cost. And as you know, costs in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! cannot be negated. Um, so you can send them for cost, get them off the field, and then you can get your pluses. This is why a card like Skill Drain is absolutely busted uh, in White Force. Because of the fact that you can have a skill drain face up, and if you say normal summon a stellar from hand, use the stellar's effect, even though it's effects are negated, you still have to send for cost. You send the skill drain for cost, and now your effects back online, and you're going to get the summon. Of course, that's going to turn the opponent's effects on as well, but obviously, depending on the game set, you choose whether or not you want to do that. And with the stun cards, if this is messenger of peace instead, you know, you can still kind of build your board and play the game. Um, and then you can kind of just do whatever it is you want to do, either sitting on bodies or just constantly Book of Eclipsing the opponent, and then you just mill them out, and you just stall them out with Messenger of Peace, Skill Drain, things like that. So this is a flex spot, can really be whatever it is that you want. It's just something to keep in mind. I'm back and forth on it and uh, Messenger of Peace. Uh, we're also playing three copies of this that I pulled out of my case. I told you this case was cracked. Um, three copies of Legend. I was on one, but... These essentially act as more copies of a Stellar, and a Stellar is basically how you play the game. Um, if you're opening up the level 4 tuner, uh, this guy, the, uh, what is this thing called? Oh, the, the Sylvie. If you're opening up Sylvie, and you normal summon that, and you don't have a Stellar, the opponent's going to hand trap that all day, every day. Um, because then you're just telegraphing your opponent, hey, I don't have any other plays, boom. Um, obviously, they're going to negate the Stellar if they have the hand trap, which is... The biggest issue right now with White Forest, which I think gets better post uh, Rage of the Abyss, um, when we get the Azamina monsters, even though I've already ranted about those cards, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out, because um, I'm tired of the Snake Eyes garbage support, um, but they really lose hard to hand traps, and so being able to have a card like this that maybe you can bait out in Ash and then normal summon a Stellar and then go from there, or even just having a higher chance of opening with this, this simply says when a when this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a monster effect. So you can activate a runic spell, summon out Hugin, pitch this, and then use this to set it, uh, or use this effect to set it. And then you can also chain block with things like, you know, if you say normal summon a Stellar, use the effect pitch the Legend to summon out Sylvie, Sylvie, chain link one to search, and then chain link two Legend, and now they can't Ash you, and all this does just set itself to the field and you can activate it later um so i feel that this is just really good consistency it's essentially just a once per turn rota it's really not bad uh and then we're playing one copy of woes because this is all that you need you can recur it with the diabel synchro and then once again this is something i'm back and forth on i don't know if i want to play imperms or if i want to play skill drains um i'm messing around with skill drains currently just because skill drain is such a god card and honestly i think it's going to get banned when we get our list in late august per konami um, but this is just something else that you can mess with, right? You know, you can recur your, any spell and trap in the game with Diabell, um, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and we're going to be talking about that more once I show the extra deck. Um, but I'm starting to think that skill drain really needs to be a main deck card. It's basically good going second. And obviously it's really good going first. Um, so I feel that that's just going to come down to what is this next ban list going to bring and how people deck build, of course. Um, and then for the extra deck. There are some things I'm kind of back and forth on. We'll talk about that. Uh, three Hugin and a Gary. I was on two, but God, sometimes you just want to have that third copy just to be able to know that you can play the game and extend and do whatever it is you need to do. Because Hugin's not once per turn. So, like, I've had hands and just plays where I've popped off and I've been able to summon out multiple Hugins and search both my fountains and, like, use the same fountain twice in a turn. Because you can send it off for Celia to draw. You play it again. You play three more runic spells. Send back three. Draw three. Like... 
It's it's like you're playing three or four Runic Fountain, even though it's at two. It's actually kind of bananas. Um, and then one copy of D-Bell. So this card is absolutely insane. If you summon it using a Tuner Synchro Monster as a material, then you can target one spell or trap in your grave and add it back to your hand. So what's really cool with this is that, you know, you can send a Skill Drain for cost off of um, the Resselia effect monster uh, or the Estellar or the Rosette, whatever. You make this. And then you can use this to recur the skill drain and then just set it. Yeah, you got to pay a thousand life points again. You get players this time in the round. Oh, well, like it happens. Um, what's also cool with this is that obviously you can reuse things that are soft once per turns. So a card that's played in Runic Stun, like say Card Scanner, you activate the Card Scanner. It's a soft once per turn. Use the effect cost spell, add a Runic spell to your hand. Send the Card Scanner to Grave. Summon out, say, Rosette or normal summon a Stellar. Send the card scanner, do your combos. Make Diabell specifically with a Synchro Tuner. So, like, say, you know, this guy is how you're typically going to make it. Use the Diabell, get back card scanner, play card scanner. Get another card from the bottom of your deck to your hand. So, there's a lot of applications with this that I feel extend beyond White Forest itself. Um, and so, because of that, I just... That, that, that's one. This card is one of the biggest reasons why I think White Forest Runic is the best version right now. Uh, and then we're playing one copy of Roselia. Um, it sends a spell or trap to search you. Either it searches you a light spellcaster, but usually you're just using it to search for woes because you can also get any white force card. So it's it's kind of forgettable, honestly. Um, and then we're playing one of this thing. This thing is fucking bonkers. So what what's this thing called? Sil Sylvie? Uh, Silveria. Yeah. So this is the synchro version of the tuner, I guess. So this says when this card's special summon, not synchro summon. It just says when it's special summon, you can use the effect, flip all the opponent's face-up monsters and face-down defense mode. This is not once per turn either. So, like, another cute effect that Diabelle has is that whenever the opponent activates a card or effect, you can special summon a white forest synchro monster. So, uh, you know, they activate, I don't know, uh, reinforcement of the army, and they've got a, two monsters face-up on the field. You chain the Diabelle, you summon this guy out, uh, chain resolves on a new chain this activates book of eclipses their board the tuners the sylvie and the Roselia, have effects when they're in grave where you can target a white four synchro monster on your field or in your grave and send it back to the extra deck to summon the tuners so if you end on say diabelle plus woes you can book of eclipse them twice because the diabelle can summon uh this guy he's gonna book of eclipse everything you can use the effect of one of your tuners in grave either the Roselia or the sylvie target this send it back to the extra deck, summon them out, use the woes to summon out one of your level twos in deck or hand, and then you just make this again and then use the effective Book of Eclipse again. It's really bonkers, and it's something that not a lot of people talk about that I think is very overlooked with this deck. It's not super hard to play through it, but when you're staring down, say, floodgates like Messenger and Skill Drain, you're going to be crapping all over the venue floor. Speaking of which, uh, yes, one, one copy of this. I think I already said that, but whatever. Um, like I said, we've got proxies in here. Sorry, y'all. Uh, one Tri Edge, uh, you basically just use this as another level 6 to extend into either Ultimaya, Tzolkin, or uh, Crimson Dragon, depending on which version of the extra deck you want to play. Uh, the only effect that's relevant is that since you're using a level 2 and 4, you get to draw a card. I've had games where I've drawn like 6 or 7 cards in a turn. It's actually kind of crazy. Uh, Chaos Angel is busted in this deck. I don't care what anyone says. Um, this can be any level 12. Um, you could have this be Final Sigma. You could have this be Legadia. I kind of prefer Legadia, though, um, because Legadia gives you an extra draw, uh, which I thought it had to pop a monster in order to draw, but it just gives you a free draw, and it's a level 12, obviously, with Crimson Dragon to make King Calamity, uh, or Cosmic Blazar if, like, you know, you see this video by the time a new ban list drops in King Calamity's ban, or you just don't feel like playing King Calamity, which, sorry, but King Calamity is a god card. Um, so, yeah, th this is... For testing purposes in this video, just consider this to be Legadia, because getting free draws is insane. Uh, this is Cosmic Blazar. I ran out of ink in my printer. <laughs> um, one King Calamity, because again, it's a god card. Like, I'm sorry if you hate it, but it's good. Um, I'm messing around between Ultimaya Tzolkin and Crimson Dragon. Um, I think I'm really starting to like Crimson Dragon, just because being able to King Calamity is insane. And you may be thinking, well, Avery, you're playing Runic Spells. The King Calamity doesn't matter. It's the fact that you're guaranteed to get the game back to you. Um, because even though you can't attack, it ensures that by that point you're going to have so much advantage that uh, not allowing them to play cards is insane. And then keep in mind, you can also Cosmic Blazar under Skill Drain because it banishes for cost, so it resolves off field. So... Uh, you could take out the King Calamity if you want to focus on more 
I guess, playing stun cards, but I feel like that the King Calamity thing is, it's not a big deal. Like, okay, you went first, you played Runic Spells, you're skipping your battle phase, it comes back to you, you King Calamity them, you attempt to enter battle phase, your turn's skipped, you probably also have a Cosmic Blazar on the field, along with King Calamity and our Legadia. You probably have so much advantage, you're probably sitting on like eight cards in your hand, if not nine at that point. So you just set some back row so you don't have to discard anything. And then you're just off to the races from there. You can attack them on the next turn as long as you don't play any runic spells. If you have to, fine. Like, you have big beaters. They're not going to destroy you. You can just mill them out at that point. So, I really like the Crimson Dragon Package. And then, one little night, one Sky Crisis. These cards are overall good. Um, so, anyway, we talked about that. Let's go ahead and uh, dive into some combos. So while I'm shuffling this up here, I may as well talk about some of the weaknesses with this deck. Biggest thing, like I said before, is Nibiru and Droll. Uh, when you run into Shifter, if you are on, like, say, Messenger of Peace, Skill Drain, Card Scanner, and all that, then I feel like you can kind of play more passively than anything else when running into a Shifter, assuming that we don't get it banned on the August ban list. Um, but Shifter does hurt. Um, you definitely don't need the Toy Box Package with the runic cards i was messing around with that for a while but having both the toy box cards and runic cards just feels like it's kind of overkill like you also need things that help you play when going second um which is why i've seen some builds playing board breakers like evenly dark ruler thrust regeki whatever the case may be because if you go first with those cards then their spells or traps that you can send off of the white force monster effect so they're not totally dead um, I've seen some builds even playing Prosperity for Consistency, but you don't really have a whole lot of room to be banishing cards out of your extra deck. You need every card you have. Um, like I said, Bryn YGO was messing around with the Millennium cards. I think that that has potential. Being able to turn, you know, any random White Forest monster into a continuous spell seems pretty good. Um, but again, also, this is just the first stages of the deck. You know, maybe Joshua Schmidt sees this and is like, I don't like that he plays this card, and uh, instead we're going to play something else. Or maybe he just keeps that goo to himself, and then he tells everybody after the fact that he's already won an event. Which, whatever. <laughs> Makes it sound like I'm hating on him. He's actually pretty cool. So, this is our opening hand. Keep in mind that the Talents could be a Messenger piece, and the Imperm could be a Skill Drain which, if that's the case with this hand, then this hand is just fucking bonkers because you're pretty much playing Runic Stun, but you can make a King Calamity or a Cosmic Blazar, depending on your flavor of the day and what tickles your fancy. Um, the biggest issue, of course, is that we opened up Sylvie and we didn't see a Stellar. Um, so if they hand trap us, and this is actually what's really nice with the Runic cards, um, you know, let's say that we summon this and, you know, they hand trap us. Well... That's not terrible because, again, we're sitting on potentially two Floodgate cards and we've got two Runic spells, um, depending on how we want to play it out. You know, if uh, if for whatever reason we think we don't need the Messenger, then we could go Tip to Search and then go Flashing Fire into Hugin or just use Tip to get the Fountain and then go Flashing Fire. We're still going to get a draw, too. Um, but since we didn't open a Stellar, I say let's just play it out as if, you know, our opponent's just... They're uh, they're just asleep at the wheel. So Sylvie searches us a Whitewood Speller Trap. We're going to go ahead and grab Legend. We're going to activate the Legend. And the biggest issue is that we need our normal summon for the uh, Stellar. So when you don't have access to it, typically you can either go for like Reset to like, I guess, search you a Stellar. The biggest thing is like getting a Stellar in the graveyard, um, which we can do because we can go Legend, grab a Stellar, and then you can use the runic spells to pitch the Stellar so you get it into the grave. So let's play that out. So we're going to go Flashing Fire. Um, we're going to end up pitching that Stellar. Hopefully you all can see that. Uh, we're going to go Hugin. <clears throat> Activate Hugin's effect, ditching the Stellar for cost. And the Flashing Fire goes to grave. Do, 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 do. We're going to assemble all the good cards. We're going to go for a Fountain. Um, of course, we're going to activate the Fountain. That's kind of hard to see, I know, but uh, yeah, we're just going to say that the fountain is right here, okay? So there's the fountain, um, and then we have the uh, runic tip that we could play as well. Um, unfortunately, since we had to use the Estellar to pitch off of Hugin, it wasn't in our grave when we pitch a spell or trap, so it, it kind of makes things a little bit more complicated, but we can 
we can kind of play around that. So we're gonna go for slumber. Again, you could go for droplets, but like I said, I don't want to let my opponent draw. So there is the argument to be made that you could cut the golden droplets and like even dispelling potentially um, for like two other stun cards, like card scanner, or if you wanna go a different route with the deck, whatever the case may be. Um, and then we're just gonna activate slumber targeting the Hugin. We've made them banish four cards off their deck. Yeah. So then of course we're gonna use the fountain to send back these three in order to, if I could pick up the frickin' cards, send back three, <clears throat> draw three cards. We're hitting Slumber, Fountain, and Flashing Fire. Not the best thing in the world since we've already used Flashing Fire and Slumber this turn, but it's not awful. We can still play the game. This deck is very combo heavy. It's very non-linear, which for a mid-range player like me, I'm surprised I've fallen in love with this deck as much as I have. Um, it's actually fine, though, because we can do cute things with this. So remember that uh, Sylvie and Roselia are the tuners. So we're going to Synchro <clears throat> into Roselia. Uh, this is a uh, level 6 tuner Synchro, too, which is nice. We're going to activate the effect, sending... Bah, 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 bah. We're going to send the Flashing Fire, since we already played it, which is totally fine, uh, because now that's going to get us to a Stellar. So first we search off of the Roselia to get us our woes. Now, if they nib us, we kind of don't care because we have access to our Book of Eclipse monster. And if assuming that the talents and imprint is Messenger and Skill Drain, we really don't care about Nibiru because they're probably not gonna be able to play the game anyway. On a new chain, the a Stellar is going to activate since we sent a Speller Trap from Hand or Field to Grave as cost to activate a monster effect, we can special summon this back. And we haven't used the effect yet. This is where like we basically play for like 10 minutes because now we can go a Stellar and send a Speller Trap in order to um, summon out, say, like, Roselia, which we can send Fountain to draw a card off the effect. Um, yeah, this this becomes absolutely insane. Uh, so the Estellar summons the Roselia. Woes is going to activate since we sent it for a monster effect, so it's going to get set. Um, we haven't made our level 6 Diabelle yet. God, this hand's, this hand's crazy. Or as I like to say, crazy with a capital K. When it's just that good, it changes the, the spelling of crazy. <clears throat> so Roselia's effect can send a spell or trap from hand or field to grave to draw a card. So keep that in mind. So we're going to send the uh, fountain off field. We're going to draw a card. I'm just going to leave it face down because it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's another seller. We, like, who cares? So we've drawn uh, three cards so far. At first, I thought I just stopped my recording. We've drawn three cards off the fountain, and we drew one off Roselia. So we've drawn four cards in this combo, and that's without starting with uh, a Stellar. That's with starting with uh, Sylvie. So we have a couple of different lines that we can go down. I want to establish the Diabelle because I want to get the fountain back so that we can draw even more cards. So we're going to synchro off the Stellar and the level six. <clears throat> we're going to go Diabelle, and then Diabelle's effect target any spell or trap in our grave. So we could even get the legend back if we wanted to, but it's up once per turn on the activation. So we're gonna go ahead and get back Fountain. I guess you could consider this a draw. I mean, it's another card that we're adding to hand. I mean, we're sitting on six cards. Um, so make with that info what you will. We could draw another card by synchroing off these two into uh, Centurion Legadia, um, which do I wanna make that play? Oh, we've already used Slumber. We have the Woes set. Um, so we could go Legadia to draw, but we also want to try and set up, like, King Calamity. So we go Legadia, we go draw, send back the two Synchros, but then we don't have another Runic spell that we can play, so it becomes kind of awkward. Uh, we're going to activate Sylvie, targeting a uh, White Forest Synchro on field or engraved. Send it back to the extra deck summon. Uh, yeah, it's really awkward. I mean, it would depend on what this card is. In this case, it's a Stellar, so it doesn't help. If it was a Runic spell name that we haven't used, then that's a lot more helpful because then we can activate that to get to Hugin and make a level 6. The only other play that I see us being able to do here is that we could go Legadia and draw and hope for the best. If we're not playing that, then you could maybe just end on Diabelle and like make a little knight with these two if you wanted to. 
Um, it really depends on like how you want to design your extra deck. But for, again, for the giggles of it, just to show kind of what this deck can do, we're going to go ahead and use Diabelle and the Sylvie to make, um, actually, excuse me, we're not going to do that. We're going to specifically use Roselia because we haven't used the effect to summon from Grave yet. So we send that in the Diabelle because you want to preserve the body. To make, we're going to say that this is uh, Legadia. So it's going to activate to draw us a card. And in this case, we hit another Slumber Jesus. That's really bad. Um, but we've drawn what now? These two, the Roselia, the Legadia, plus we drew three off Fountain. So we've drawn five cards, plus we got a Fountain back from Grave with the Diabelle. So we're up six cards in this case. Um, and then in this case, since we don't have any other ways to really push through, we could go Roselia to send back the Diabelle to summon it. Um, so that when we activate the Woes, we just summon out a level 2 and then make the level 6 Book of Eclipse Sylvaria. And again, if the Imperm and Talents are Messenger and Skill Drain, you're sitting on a really, really good board. Uh, which is why I'm really tempted to put those cards back in this list. Um, so that's really kind of how this plays. Um, again, it, it would have been totally different if we just opened up a Stellar instead of Sylvie. Because then you're ending on like uh, 10 cards on board, like 6, 7 cards in hand. Um, so yeah, actually let's go ahead and, uh, show that off and see what we can do. So I figure the best way to kind of show off what runic white force can do is you can extend into like crimson dragon to make either cosmic blaze or make a king calamity on the opponent's turn. If you open up two runic spells, doesn't matter what they are as long as they're the quick plays and a stellar, but we're going to show just the basic combo of what one spell plus the stellar can get you, right? So we're going to go ahead and summon a Stellar. We are going to activate the effect. Send the Freezing Curse. You don't activate it because you're going to get it back with the... Um, ba 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 The Diabelle. Couldn't think of the name for a second. We're going to summon Sylvie. We're going to activate Sylvie's effect. That's going to get the Legend of the White Forest to our hand. We're going to grab that. And then here, we can Synchro with the 2 and the 4. <clears throat> to make the Roselia. Roselia's effect is gonna send the legend for cost in order to add the woes to hand. Keep in mind, we still have four other cards in our hand that we can play with. This is in our hand. Um, now we have some chain blocks to declare since we sent a spell or trap to activate effect. We have a stellar and legend. So we're gonna go with stellar one and then legend two. Legend's gonna set itself. We're gonna summon the a stellar and then from here, again, assuming that we have no other like runic spells or cards that we can play with, we're just going to make a level 8 <clears throat> to go Diabelle. Again, if you had another runic spell, then you could um, extend from there and like get out your level 2 Hugin and, and kind of play the game. Um, Diabelle, again, specifically, since we used a Tuner Synchro, we're going to use the effect to get a spell or trap from Grave to Hand. So we're going to get back the Freezing Curse because we haven't activated it. So we're going to go ahead and play it to go Hugin, and then Hugin is going to pitch the Woes, because we're going to get it right back, because it has the same setting effect. We're going to grab Fountain. Uh, activate Woes effect to set to the field, so we now have both Legend and Woes, and we can still activate um, the Legend in order to extend, and we have Fountain. So we're going to go ahead and activate the Legend, and then we've already used Sylvie and all that, so you can go for either Reset. Um, or if you just want to go for Roselia, you can go for the Roselia depending on the game state. Um, but in this case, I'm actually going to go for Reset because that's going to search us the Roselia since that way we will have all the names in rotation. We're going to use the effect in hand to send Fountain for cost, but obviously if you have any other spells or traps, or if you have enough runic spells in your hand where you can activate the Fountain and like play two more runic spells to start milling and then send back three to draw three, then once you do that, you could say like dump the Fountain to summon the Reset if you're able to make Diabelle, you know, later on in the combo or do that kind of like little mini line where you play three runic spells and then draw three, send off the fountain, then you can use the Diabelle, get back the fountain, play it again. And if you have more runic spells to play, then you'll be able to draw three more cards. So like I've used the same runic fountain in the same turn like twice and I've drawn six cards. It, you know, it, it gets that good, especially when you just go off uninterrupted. So we're going to activate the reset since we control a white force monster, send a spell or trap from hand or field to grave in order to special summon it and then search one. So we're going to go ahead and search the Roselia. Since we control white force monster, we can special summon it. So we're going to activate it in hand to special summon. 
Again, we could draw even more cards by sending a spell or trap from hand or field to grave to draw. In this case, we are just assuming that we don't have that because um, this is just a two-card combo, right? Um, from here, this is kind of like your um, end board, like before you start moving on into other things. You know, you've got this in the extra monster zone, and then you've got these here just chilling as like free bodies with whatever you, you want to do. Um, again, you could leave the Diabelle up on the board with the woes that you can double Book of Eclipse the opponent's board, just depending on, you know, your matchup. But in this field's case, uh, we do have the level 6 Synchro Engrave. So I'm going to go ahead and go Roselia and the Hugin, because I want to free up the extra monster zone, depending on just what other cards I've drawn. We're going to go Tri-Edge Master to draw us a card, which, again, this could be even more cards. Um depending on how you open you know maybe you've drawn six cards because you double fountained or you drew one off roselia and then you draw one off tri edge like you can draw upwards of like nine cards at that point or even just plus 10 in general because you got one back with diabell um so we go tri edge to draw one <clears throat> then we can go the effect of sylvie to send back the level six synchro in order to summon and then from here you could make a uh, just light attribute chaos angel uh, or if you have another runic spell, you could play it to make the Gary, and then you could do like Gary and the Tri Edge to make um, Chaos Angel for both light and dark, because Gary's a dark. Uh, just depends on you know what path of the Rosetta Stone you want to go down, I guess. <laughs> um, but for this example's case, we're gonna go ahead and synchro with the Rosette to remake the level six synchro that we just made. You could make Silvera, I guess. I don't know why, um, but you could if like you know something happens to this. So now, this is where, like, Tzolkin and Crimson Dragon are kind of... People are going back and forth on. Because you could slam both of these into Tzolkin. They both have the same level. One, uh, this is a non-tuner. This is a tuner. You can make the Tzolkin, and then if you have a spell or trap in your hand that you can set, that gets you to Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. And I've done plays, and I've seen plays, where, like, you can make double Crystal Wing. Problem is, that doesn't really help you with Nib. Um, and I feel like if they have it, they're going to, if anything, Nib you on the Tzolkin, and you're kind of just losing out on stuff. Um, so I'm on Crimson Dragon right now because it's, it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't, you're, you're going to get screwed by Nib either way, I feel. Um, it's, it's a really, really tough point. Um, and I know I've said that before, but that, that should show like how powerful Nibiru is as a card into this deck, which it's nice that not a lot of people are playing it because of Fiendsmith cards. Um, but both of these could slam into say to Zulkin or crimson dragon whatever it is that you're playing um and then if you have other ways to extend um like if you're playing the calamity package you have yet to use roselia you've used sylvie you haven't used roselia you can send back the level six again you make roselia synchro with the level eight to then make any level 12. It could be Final Sigma, it could be Legadia. Let's just say it's Legadia so that we draw another card. So bare minimum, even if you don't draw off Roselia, draw off a Fountain, you're drawing two cards. Um, then you go Crimson Dragon, target the, what would be Legadia. You can make Cosmic Blazar, or you could end on this, plus any other Runic Spells or Floodgates that you have. And then once the opponent plays a card out, because you don't want to get impermed, you go Crimson Dragon, target the Legadia. Send it on back for our big, juicy friend... King Calamity. And now they can't play the game. And again, you're probably thinking, well, Avery, that's pointless. You're a scrub. What are you doing with your life? You can't attack. You don't care because you've accumulated so much advantage at that point. And if you want to, then you go, okay, activate Marunic Spells, attempt to enter battle phase, battle phase, skip, pass. Oh, hey, my opponent's sitting on a messenger and a skill drain that they can get rid of at any time. Plus a King Calamity. Plus, you're going to have more than enough gas in your grave to either Book of Eclipse them because you have the woes um and then you also have sylvie or roselia you can send back the diabelle and then just climb into crimson dragon and then make cosmic blazar so like how do you lose <laughs> like if they have dark ruler sure but like that's not something you try and play around game one like unless they're just that guy in the room playing dark ruler in the main deck so that's sort of like what it can do bare minimum so let's go ahead and wrap up and talk about uh well everything that this deck is weak to so what are the biggest choke points with this deck? Stopping the Estellar is going to be your biggest point of concern. If you negate this card, you've pretty much won. This is why like a lot of people are going with Runic cards, because even though it is crucial to get this off, and yeah, you can Book of Eclipse the opponent potentially twice, 
uh, it pales in comparison to when you're just like kind of just big cheesing the opponent with stun cards like you know you're sitting on a messenger of peace and a skill drain that you can get rid of at any time like any deck that can play around skill drain or even main deck it and still play the game is just so good i mean look at back uh, even when i played my 60 card eldritch branded deck and we were playing mystic mind skill drains the whole nine um and it was just really good because people couldn't deal with it or even look at snake eye now main decking some builds main decking skill drain some side decking it goes to show how powerful the card is and so there's a lot of different ways to build it I, i've talked about the flex spots um and i think really it just depends on what the format becomes post august when we get a new ban list you know if people are going hand trap heavy i think that that's really going to hurt this deck um, and I think it will get a lot better once we get the Azamina cards out of Rage of the Abyss, even though I hate that we're getting even more Snake Eye support because I'm so over that garbage. Um, the deck will get better. Worst case scenario, this is a pet deck that we know is going to get more support down the line because we already know what's in Rage of the Abyss. And this is a brand new archetype. They're going to want to support it at least for a couple sets, I would imagine. So, guys, let me think, or let me think, let me know what you guys think about all of this uh, down in the comments below. Is there something I forgot to mention, something I missed? Um, or what's ways that we can make the deck better. Guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.